Yes, we're gonna be making some wood-fired pizza. And in order to do that, we have to get our dough ready. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing something like a brisket or pork butt, I like to get everything done the day before, like seasoned up and put it in the refrigerator so the next day you can just start cooking. I'm gonna be doing some of that here today too. The dough, the sauce, things like that are going to be made today and we're gonna cook them tomorrow. One of the reasons for that is when you make the dough, if you let it ferment overnight in the refrigerator, it really helps develop some nice flavor. You don't have to do that, but it does help. So let's get started on the dough. We're starting with a cup of warm water, and that's about 105 degrees. To this, I'm adding a teaspoon of just regular table sugar and one package of active dry yeast. Just wanna make sure all our yeast is sort of down in the water there. And we're just gonna let this come alive for about 10 minutes before we move on. So our yeast is definitely alive. That's one of the reasons you do this with some warm water and sugar. The sugar is food for the yeast. It just proves that that yeast is not dead. 99.9% .9 of the time, that's not gonna matter. It's gonna be fine. And I've made pizza dough using instant dry yeast too, where you don't have to activate it like this. But this is nice and foamy, it's good. Let's start adding our other ingredients, starting with two tablespoons of olive oil one teaspoon of kosher salt, and three cups of all-purpose flour. Bring my bowl up, and I'm gonna start mixing on low speed. Scrape our sides a little bit here, and this is where you start kind of playing it by ear, seeing how dry or wet the dough is. If it is too dry, you can add a little bit more water, like a teaspoon at a time. If it's too wet, you can add a little more flour. Right now I can see this is a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Now it looks a little too wet. I added a little too much water. I went a little bit extra there, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of flour. So just maybe, like I said, a teaspoon of flour in there. So our dough ball has pulled away from the sides now, and that's what we want. And I'm gonna continue kneading for about two to three minutes on about speed two. Get our dough hook off of here. Nice gluten development there, it's nice and stretchy. So I'm gonna get a little bit of flour on my countertop here, get our dough ball out. We're gonna form it so it can go into a bowl to continue its rise. So I just want to kind of work this a little bit here into a rough ball shape. You know, kind of bring those edges down underneath, kind of like you're pinching it. I've got my bowl right here. I want to hit this with a little olive oil spray. You could just brush some olive oil in there if you want. And I'm going to get this in here and I want to roll it around. I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap here. And we're gonna set this aside to rise for one to two hours. Now, if you're in a cold place, this could take a little longer. Um, one thing I have seen people do before is sort of turn on the oven to say 200 degrees, turn it off, and then just set this on the stovetop above the oven so that sort of that residual rising heat just keeps it a little bit warmer while it's rising. So we'll set this aside and we're gonna move on to making our sauce and some meatballs. So the basis of our sauce is tomato puree. This is 28 ounces of tomato puree. And this is also gonna have a really good time overnight in the refrigerator with these flavors coming together even more. But again, you could make this an hour or two ahead of time, it'll be fine. To this I'm adding one tablespoon of minced garlic, one tablespoon of dried oregano, one tablespoon of dried basil, half a teaspoon of a coarsely ground black pepper, and a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm just gonna mix this all together here. 
You can already smell that basil and oregano perfuming here. Let's get a little taste, see if we need to adjust for flavor. I'm gonna add just a little more salt. It's maybe, I don't know, half a teaspoon. And there we go. This is going in the refrigerator overnight and we'll use it tomorrow. But now let's move on to making some meatballs because we're gonna cook some meatballs in the pizza oven tomorrow before we cut them in half, break them up and put them on the pizza. It's gonna be a meatball pizza, it's gonna be terrific. Now we're not gonna be making a ton of meatballs because really this is just for pizza topping. So I've got a pound of ground beef here. This is an 85-15. To this I'm gonna add one teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of a coarsely ground black pepper, one teaspoon of granulated garlic, one egg, and a quarter cup of breadcrumbs. I'm not gonna add all of that at once. I'm gonna add maybe half of it and then we'll add more if we need to. And we mix. I can tell we're gonna need the rest of those breadcrumbs, so we'll add them. Now let's form these into our meatballs. I'm really not going for large ones because we're gonna be breaking them down, so really just something like that. Looks like we're gonna end up with eight meatballs. That's fine. All right, I'm gonna cover these and they're gonna go in the refrigerator overnight too. And in about, I don't know, hour or so, we'll check our pizza dough, see how the rise is going. So our pizza dough has been rising for about an hour and 15 minutes here. I think we've got a pretty good rise. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'd say that rose beautifully. Now let's just see how it feels. Nice. Very good gassy and that's what you want here but we're actually going to take this out of here knock that down a little bit and divide it into three pieces that'll make three good sized pizzas i'm only going to use one of those tomorrow so let's get this out of here and weigh it so you can see how much it deflated and that's normal it's going to continue to proof and ferment a little bit in the refrigerator overnight get nice and puffy again in the individual pieces all right we have 669 grams so i want to go about 220 each that'll give me three roughly equal pieces just zero that out here 202 201 214 226, close enough. Set that aside for a second. Your next piece, 228, that's close enough for me. Let me move my scale out of the way. All I'm gonna do with these is what I did with the large dough ball, is I'm just gonna form these into smaller sort of pinched dough balls. And I'm not putting any flour down because there's still some good oil on the surface of these, so they're not really sticking. So just like that. Let me set these to the side here. Just have a nice container here that I can proof these in. And I'm putting some parchment paper in between these because they will kind of come together and I just don't want to have to separate them when they get all sticky together. That one. All right, I'm put the lid on this. It's gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. And tomorrow I'll see you outside at the New K Pizarro wood-fired pizza oven. All right, our pizza dough after sitting in the fridge and proofing overnight has been sitting out now in my kitchen for about two hours just to let it come up to room temp. It makes it easier to work with. So now I'm gonna fire up the New K Pizarro wood-fired pizza oven. And one of the things that I like to use to fire it up is a piece of fat wood. This is really good. It's got a lot of resin in it, burns really good and gets the rest of that wood going. I also have a little tumbleweed in there to help get this going. So let's light it up. We'll let that catch, and I'm burning white oak today in the pizza oven. I really like using that wood. Burns really well, burns hot. So this is gonna take about 30 minutes for that deck inside those refractory tiles to come up to temp. And then we're gonna start making our meatballs first, get those out so they can become the topping for our pizza. So the new K Pizarro is now up to temp. We were about at 900 degrees and that'll moderate down a little bit. 
Um, if I add wood, it'll go back up. But if it gets in that 700 to 900 range, that's really where I like to do the pizza. And right now I have our meatballs in a little cast iron pan. We're gonna put those in there, cook these up. Could take five minutes, could take 10 minutes. We'll check the temp when we take them out. And one thing when you're working with a pizza oven, you wanna have good gloves. These are welding gloves. We'll keep an eye on those. Like I said, it's probably not gonna take more than five minutes. Let's see how these are looking. Just wanna do a quick temp check, see how close we are. Still have a little bit to go. Let's see how we're doing here. That's on 140, which is good, because once we cut these, they're gonna finish on the pizza. So let's get these meatballs out and get them prepped for our pizza. So I'm gonna transfer the meatballs to this tray, and we're going to just sort of cut these into some pieces to go on our pizza. And if there's any left over, we'll have a snack. Reminder, the cast iron pan over here is hot. Do not touch it unless you have good gloves on. I'm just gonna cut these like in half, maybe then in quarters. Really, we're just trying to break these down a bit. I know you're going, he's cutting on a tray. This is not my good knife, so don't worry. These are extremely hot. Most of these are almost cooked completely through. Pizza oven is an oven and it gets really hot. All right, that looks good. Let's take a little taste that crunch you get from doing it with the wood fire, awesome. All right, I'm gonna get these into a bowl and we're gonna start building some pizza. I'm gonna get some flour on my board here. Get our dough out here. I'm just gonna work it a little by hand first, but I do like to cheat and use a rolling pin because I'm not a expert pizza chef and just always can't get it stretched out perfectly and a little more flour on here. And we're gonna roll. Whenever I make pizzas, I always say, if it turns out exactly round, it'll be a miracle. Now this pizza oven, you could fit about three pizzas this size in there. I like thin crust. And these usually end up being about 10 to 12 inches. That's looking good to me. Let's get some sauce on here. Again, this is all stuff you can do to your liking. How much sauce? What do you want in the sauce? Some people like a really spicy sauce. Then I'm gonna go with some freshly shredded mozzarella. Shredded this myself last night. Let's get some of our meatball pieces on here. I'm just breaking some up too, so they're a little smaller. That is looking good. I also wanna hit this with a little bit of freshly shredded Parmesan or freshly grated Parmesan right on top. And then some jalapenos kick it up a bit. All right, let's get this in the pizza oven. Oh, it's looking good. Always want to look under the crust there, not even brown yet. Close the door for a minute, really let that heat build up. See how we're doing? Just starting to see that cheese melt and bubble a bit. Just starting. One thing you can do is if you really want to get that cheese nice and crispy and melted quick, just hold this up toward the top because that's where the heat is. This is a domed pizza oven. So that heat is up there and it's also over on the far side away from the firebox because the heat travels across over there. Close this up for another minute. And you do want to turn your pizza See how the bottom's looking? Just starting to get some of that nice brown on there. Just starting. 
And really the hotter your oven and the thinner your crust, the quicker things are gonna cook. This sort of pizza at this temperature, which is running about 600, 700 degrees right now, it's gonna take about four or five minutes. If you're running 900 degrees on a really thin crust pizza, you can be done in less than two minutes. There we go. A little bit of charring here, but that's okay with me. I actually like my pizzas a little extra well done. That's how I order them at the pizza place. So let's get this out of here. Let it cool for about a minute and then we'll cut in. All right, this is looking good here. You can see, like I said, on this side, you got a little bit of a extra well done there. It's one of the things about a pizza oven. It gets hot, but you don't have to get it that browned if you want or that charred. You can just sort of back it off a little bit due to the lower temperature, but I like my pizza well done. So let's cut into here. Let's get a piece and a taste. That looks good. I'm diving in because I'm hungry. Mm. Cheese pull. That's really nice with those jalapenos. Let's get some meatball. I love all kinds of pizza. I love veggie pizza. I love cheese pizza. But pizza with meats are my favorite. Pepperoni is probably my top favorite. But when you get a nice hunk of meat on these, like with those meatballs, that's a winner. I won't eat this all myself, probably. 